2023 is here, and today is Vision Sunday for those of you that uh, weren't made aware, but you can be seated. Y'all can be seated, because uh, what I want to do is I want to go over uh, 2022 and recap some numbers with you, uh, because I think it's going to totally blow your mind as it did me. I hope it blows your mind as it blew my mind. Okay, so 2022, we did a year-end offering, and I want to thank every person who contributed it in that. You're such a blessing. But the total amount for the year-end offering was $38,544. What? Collectively, I was off on the number, Benjamin. They had to correct me. But collectively, for global missions, we gave $12,744 to Sujo John. Look at your neighbor say, hey, neighbor. Your mind is about to be blown. <laughs> Corporately as a church, we gave to outside ministries nationally and internationally at the amount of $105,000 in the year. Our little church on Blue Ridge Boulevard gave $105,000 locally, nationally, and around the world. Boy, listen, when you give out, God's going to give back in. Are you all ready for this? Sit down. Don't, don't put the number up there, Berto, till I, till I release all the numbers. So we, we, gave, we gave away $105,000. January 1... LifeGate Church had $34,433 in the bank as cash flow money. Our goal was by the end of the year to have $100,000 in the bank cash flow money. <laughs> but today, we have $134,722.91 in the bank. You did that. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you did that, neighbor. Now, now the, goal for, the goal for 23 is $200,000. Because remember, I told you last year for every million dollars that a church asks from the bank, huh? Every million dollars that a, y'all can be seated because it's going to get better. Every, every, <laughs> yeah, right, I hear you, Daylin. Every million dollars from the bank, they want to see, they want to see a $100,000 cash flow per year per million that you want to ask for. So how much are we going to save till? I don't know. Maybe God just write a check and we can pay for it in cash, you know? So in 2022, we set out the beginning of the year to expand our sanctuary and to uh, finish it. Now, we're like 99.9% .9 done with the expansion of the church uh, sanctuary. And here's the good news. LifeGate didn't pay a dollar for it. Well, okay, I'll make sure y'all pay for it next year. But in 2022, LifeGate Church didn't pay a dollar for it. It was all brought in from the online viewership as contributions to our church. Come on. That was the before, but thank God for the after. You better sing, Bray. You, you know, that, that was the before. Thank God for the after. And man, I want to thank every person who, with, through their muscles, helped us do that this year. Now, I preached multiple messages in this pulpit last year. I tried to out add them all up together, but I got irritated, so I stopped doing it. But, but we, we, I came to you collectively, and we began to preach messages. My wife jumped in on some of those, and I preached on um, it, it, the, uh, I, that was an error. That's my bad. Sorry, y'all. It wasn't actually four types of giving. It was actually first things. I did that series, and then I preached on Breaking Babylon. I did Twisted Sister, Relationship Goals, Ghosted, and Don't Listen to the Logic. Now, on the count of three, I want you to, I want you to shout out which one of those series is was your favorite. Ready? One, two, three, go. Man, that was my favorite too. Just push your neighbor and say, he is so funny. Collectively as a church, within the four walls of LifeGate, we serve 15,285 manpower volunteer hours in the church. 
You ought to give yourself, you ought to just give your neighbor a big applause for that. Wow. For Love Week, we served, 140 of us served and signed up for Love Week, and 460 manpower hours were served to the organizations, Bunks Across America, Shelter KC, Relentless Pursuit, and Care Beyond the, Bul- Beyond the Boulevard. Y'all to give yourself a big round of applause for that. Now, our reach online, when I say our online reach, I'm talking about YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, the TikTokie, the Twitter, the, uh, well, those two, we really weren't on that much, but we should be on there. Um, our online campus and those kind of things, uh, we reached online 174,000 people. That, that don't impress you much? That don't impress you much. 174,000 people this little church in Independence, Missouri reached out to. We had an average attendance on Sunday last year. This is last year because this year it's going to double. We had an average attendance last year of 84 people viewing every single service. So what you have to do is you have to take our in-house viewership, our in-house attenders, and add that to that. That's well over 300. We'll look at the numbers here in a minute of how many people were attending our church on Sunday morning uh, last year in 2022. Bringing me to the next amazing statistic, we reached four more nations in 22 as opposed to 21, bringing our total to 29 different countries that we have reached through our multimedia ministry of LifeGate Church. We are literally preaching the gospel entirely. That don't impress you, but it does me. We're preaching the gospel around the world. Y'all ain't ready for this one. Ben, they ain't ready. Looking nice today, Tiger Man. He's single, by the way, ladies. Still single. I'm trying to get him married. He loves when I do that. He likes long walks on the beach. In 2021, in 2021 January, our average attendance was 166 people. In 2022, over the course of a year, our average attendance was 291. Last Sunday, we had 287 people here. Last Sunday. Take that, devil. 27 people went through Next Steps class. 35 people last year went public with their faith and baptism. And we counted 116 people who said yes to Jesus. One of them was Nick Elder. What y'all say? Take that, devil. One of them was Nick Elder. What? Come on, somebody, yeah. Last year, I preached at 10 different churches besides ours and traveled 3,559 miles and published one new book. Out of all the books I published, which one's your favorite? Mine too, mine too, mine too, mine too, mine too. Okay. So we did a lot in 22. We, 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 we reached a lot of people. We, we, we went through ups and downs in 22. Look at your neighbor and say, yes, we did. Yes, we We're going to go through ups and downs in 23 too. That's just life. But look at us here. We're standing. We're still declaring. We're still believing. We're still pushing. We're still standing in faith for the things of the gospel. We're still contending for biblical doctrine. Come on. We're still contending for... The Bible's right and the world is wrong. Come on. We're still continuing for righteousness sake. Here we are, right here on Blue Ridge Boulevard. Look at your neighbor and say, but we about to go somewhere. So let's let's look at a few things for 2023. Um, You know, most folks in our church, they don't realize this, but we have a whole wing in in our church Uh, That's a department that isn't done yet. So we have three more construction phases in this church before we move to the exterior uh, and repaint the whole exterior. My plan is to eventually get a metal roof put on the building, paint the exterior, 
pull the parking lot all the way to the building and get rid of that weird, that weird concrete maze out there and, and make all that, that parking lot. Uh, but that probably won't be till 24 unless the Lord really does a financial miracle, which he can do, and we're still going to trust him for that. Amen? But there's three phases that will take place this year. So um, we're going to start this thing called Guest Central. Look at your neighbor and say, Guest Central. <laughs> Guest Central is going to take place downstairs, uh, right where that dehumidifier will be a door. That door will open up to another room. Now, most of you haven't been this way because this is the administrative wing. These are our offices back here, and they're not done yet. So I'm going to take her right here. This will become Guest Central. Uh, this will be where all the first-time guests and their families come. This needs to be finished. This, this is the beautiful Pastor Janae. And this will be, this is going to be the offices for four paid staff employees at LifeGate Church that are working. One of them is Benjamin Tig. One of them is Berta Marillo. One of them is Stacy uh, uh, Dabney. I almost said Diaz. Dabney, sorry. And, and one of them is my beautiful sister-in-law, Pastor Janae. So th that will be this room. This will be the staff offices, and they're going to have a, like a, like a, 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 go back to that other picture. I'm so sorry. We're moving too fast here. They're going to have like a fourplex desk there, and they're going to get new, a new window. Because see, see how old that window is? We, we're using cardboard, y'all. Okay, go to the other room again where Benjamin was sitting so eloquently working away. So, so this room's going to be guest central, and we're going to set it up for all the first-time guests to come in and hang out here, and it will be a, a great thing. This room is, these, this room is al these are almost done. Like, I'll be painting this at the end of this week, and we'll hang the door the next week. We're going to pop a hole in the door, and then when discipleship class begins, this is where they'll be meeting for prayer on Wednesday night. It's pretty awesome, huh? Isn't God good? The second phase, after we get done with this, we're going to move back upstairs and finish the kids' wing because there's a lot of things that need to go in there that we need to get done. We're going to pull down the grid ceiling to make it up uh, to enlarge the, the, the head space in there. We're going to change, kind of manipulate the doors and the entrances for the kids' ministry because it's not conducive for how many kids are going through that wing. And then the final and third phase that we're believing God to do this year, uh, go ahead and show that video uh, if you would. So this is going back down the administrative uh, wing and you have seen we haven't talked about Pastor Jillian's office because she really don't have one. And so you go through this door. Look how much building we have, guys. To your left, this will be Pastor Jillian's office over here. And then over here will be a staff conference room area. But in here will be the brand new BGM studios where we'll be able to broadcast all over the world. In this room right here, we're going to cut this room in half, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a video studio for e-courses, e-discipleship, and we'll be able to broadcast all over the world, preaching the gospel almost on a daily basis if we want to, and we're excited about it. Are you excited about it? Okay, look at your neighbor and say, I hope you get really excited in a minute. How much is all this going to cost, Pastor? Well, it's going to cost $40,000 total. Y'all didn't get excited about it. Look at your neighbors say, come out in Jesus' name. <laughs> it's going to cost us $40,000. Yay, pastor, you have that hundred and thirty in the bank. I know we do. That ain't including that. That's our cash flow. That's, that's our name for when we go to the bank to say, oh, we got cash flow. Amen? Amen? So phase one is almost done. It, that's already paid for. It's already paid for. Phase one's paid for. <laughs> Except for a window. We got one extra window we got to buy, Matthew. So if you want to buy that window, see Matthew after church. <laughs> but all the other windows are paid for, and we thank God for that. Uh, but between the upstairs and the rest of this, the offices downstairs, it's about a $40,000 budget. And I want to thank so many of you who faithfully contribute to make sure that the needs of the house are continually met. God bless you, and we thank you so much for that. Okay, so 2023, what are some more new things we're going to be doing? Well, we're, we, we're going to be doing the, men, the men's, the midweek discipleship classes, how to study your Bible, how to pray, and the person Holy Spirit, and they're going to go on rotation, rotation throughout the year. So when one semester's done, we'll give it a couple months break, and then we'll flip it, and we'll do it again so you can take another class, because I know that's been the disappointment in some of you. We can't take all the classes, no, because they're going to be going on concurrently with one another, and we want to make sure that if those classes you want to take them, we'll have them 
them available for you. And those will be on, we'll do first Wednesday service, and then the last three Wednesdays of the month, uh, we'll have those discipleship classes for two months. So there's a total of six classes. Look at your neighbor and say six classes. So don't miss them. Because then you'll miss them. Boy, that was revelatory. So revelatory this morning. My God. Okay. Um, so our end of the year offering will be December the 3rd, 2023. So look at your neighbor say December. December. The 3rd. 20. No, 20. 23. And I want to encourage every person in the room to participate in the year end offering. Now, we were kind of low on the amount of number of people who did participate in 2022, but those low came in pretty high, you know. And uh, But if we could all participate together in the end of the year offering, we probably could meet that budget for what we're believing for the rest of the year. You say, well, pastor, you know, how much are we supposed to give? Well, this year, last year's minimum was 1000 This year's minimum, I'm encouraging you to give $1,500 as our minimum. And I'm, I'm taking the first envelope, so I don't ever ask you to do something I'm not going to do. And I promise you, if you added up your internet and cell phone bill, you're probably paying them more money than you are giving the house of the Lord in your end of the year giving. Amen. Somebody said, well, Pat, why do preachers always want your money? Because how, how is this going to make it without our contributions? Somebody told me one time, well, doesn't the government help you? I said, what are you talking? Well, you're not, you're tax exempt. What's that got to do with anything? This, the, our faith helps us. And the giving of the people helps us. Somebody said, well, the Lord is your provider. I know he is, but he uses you to provide. Don't be disobedient to him. You say, well, I don't have $1,500. I bet you if you sat down and did your bills, it's a management problem. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Amen and amen. And then our youth ministry is going to have some changes in 2023 as well. And um, I'm, I'm so thankful for all the parents who have been so gracious and merciful with me. We're going to pass those out in just a minute. I'll give the direction on that, guys. Uh, but thank you, Pastor Janae, for going and getting those. Uh, and, yep. She ran all the way to Office Depot. No, I'm kidding. She, she probably would, though. That's how she is. She's such an incredible servant's heart. She'd probably do whatever's needed. Um, but what we're going to do for 2023 for the youth ministry is, I, I, I first of all want to say thank you to all the parents who've been so kind and so gracious and merciful as we've been navigating this new season out. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus more on discipleship than a uh, service at this moment. And what that looks like is leadership development. Um, there's another gentleman in our church who's going to come alongside of me and help me. He doesn't know that yet, but he knows who I'm talking to. And we're, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to do some leadership development with our young people and do more of an internship-based type of youth ministry at the, at the beginning to, to develop a real strong leadership team. Uh, and so, so what, what, I, what I want for our youth ministry, I'm not looking for a clique or a club or for some social gathering. Uh, it's not a pizza party. It's going to be a ministry. And, and so, so I, we need to gather some young adults to help us do that and impart into their life and invest, not to, not to say that it hasn't been that, I'm just telling you where we're going, uh, to, to invest into their life and to raise them up. And then probably, I'm saying probably because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how they develop. And sometimes folks take a little longer than, than some others. But the first week, the first Wednesday night in September, which is the, well, September 13th is the day we're actually thinking about going back to regular Wednesday night youth services because the first Wednesday is the first Wednesday. So September 13th would actually be that day. We're going to, we'll then launch youth ministry regularly on a weekly basis at that point. It won't be singular driven. It will be team led. And, and so I, I'll be their youth pastor and their senior pastor as we develop a team to, and also I'm not saying they're coming, but I'm sure pulling every string I've got in the, in the cards. I've talked with their daddy and I'm trying to get the Tuttle girls here on that week to be our, that following month to be a blessing to our young people. And if you don't know who they are, y'all know who Judy Jacobs is. She sings that song. These are the days of Elijah. She wrote that song. It's her kids and they are so prophetically powerful. And other young people, and they're going to come, and we're just going to have us a little youth revival. Uh, Topeka is going to come over. Bishop Palmer's church is going to come over, and we're just going to have us a go. We're just going to go for it. 
and believe God for a youth revival. So that's where we're going in the youth ministry in 2023. But us collectively as a church in 2023, we about to ascend. Come on. We about to go higher. We about to elevate. I dare you to get up out of your seat as a prophetic action. Just say, that's me, pastor. I'm going to another place in him. Come on. Stay standing for just a minute. Let's, let's open up our Bibles. Do you have those envelopes with you? Okay, here's what I want you to do. Uh, they're going to get ready to serve the people. All the ushers are. I just want everybody in the room to get one. You can start right at the back there, Travis, since you're back there. This has a little slot for your name, LifeGate Church. You're in giving. We, we filled ours. I think I, I, somebody said, Pastor, I, I can't do it. God will put seed in the hand of the sower. If your heart says, I want to be a blessing to the house of God, I guarantee you'll fill it and some. That's what happened to us. So make sure, it, put your name on that. Start filling this now. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, start setting something aside. We do it for vacation. We do it for Golden Corral. Well, I don't, but some of y'all might. You, you may do it for Golden Corral. You do it for Sprint. You do it for Verizon. You do it for everything else. Let's do it as unto the Lord, okay? Okay. We say, we hear you, Pastor. All right, let's get into the word that God has for you today. Mark chapter number 11, verse 12 through 14, and then we're going to jump down to verse 20 through 24, and here's what the Spirit of God has for us this morning. Now, the next day when they had come out from Bethany, oh, by the way, all of our financial record information goes live today on our website. So if you would like to see where the money goes and that's being spent in the church, we made that completely public because we don't have anything to hide. We're a church of integrity. So go to lifegatekc.org, and there's a link there somewhere. I, I don't know where, but it is there. And th that information will be available to you today. So I encourage you to go, go look at it. You know, I want you to know there's nothing to hide. If you have any questions, uh, you can email complaint.lifegate.org kc.org. Okay, here we go. Mark chapter 11, verse 12 through 14 says this. Now the, <laughs> just kidding. You can see Elder Mark. Uh, now that, <laughs> Mark chapter 11, verse 12 through 14 says this. Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar off a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something there on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. Verse 14, in response, Jesus decreed to it. He spoke to it. And the tree listened. He said, let no one eat from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Verse 20 and 24. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering him, remembering, said to him, hey, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever decrees to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he decrees will be done. He will have whatever he decrees. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you decree, wouldn't you pray? Believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Job chapter 22, verse 28, and then we're going to pray. Decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Look at your neighbor and say, that means you. I want to preach a message to you this morning entitled, Everything Has an Ear. Everything has an ear. Father, I thank you for the proclamation of the word of the Lord. I pray that you pick me up and use me this morning. Let me be a blessing to somebody's life and let faith get up in this room. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said, amen and amen. Before you're seated, I want you to turn to two people and tell them, hey, everything has an ear. Online campus, I encourage you to tell yourself or share this feed or put that little chat in that little window and tell somebody that everything has an ear. Everything has an ear. Everything has an ear. Everything in your world has an ear. Everything attached to you has an ear. Everything attached to me has an ear. There are ears that are listening right now to what I say. I have 150 ears this morning in second service listening to me. Ben is listening to me. They're online listening to me. And if they can't hear me, boy, they'll sure let Miss Jerry know in an instant. They'll start texting Birdo and texting 
texting my wife. My family is notorious for texting my wife on a Sunday morning during church because they can't hear the online feed. What's she going to do about it? But it's a problem when they can't hear because everything is listening. People are listening to the words coming out of your mouth. Demons listen to us and get in agreement. They have to with us. The angelic host of heaven are listening to the decrees coming out of our mouth. The Holy Ghost is listening to the decrees that are constantly coming out of our mouth. That's why we have to be careful what we do say and what we don't say. We have to be careful that we don't curse what God is trying to bless because we're speaking curses over something. We have to be careful what we say over our marriage. Don't you say this marriage ain't ever going to work. Don't you say it's never going to happen. Don't you because because heaven gets in agreement with you. The systematic law of God has been designed for us to use our mouth. Look at your neighbor and say it's time you get a little mouthy. It's time for you tell somebody it's time for you to start using that thing that God gave you. You see he told the children of Israel if you will use your mouth and shout then the walls of Jericho will fall. Jesus said to his disciples if you say unto the mountain then the mountain will move. He said if you speak to the fig tree then the fig tree will die. He said to Lazarus to come forth and Lazarus got up out of his grave. He told Ezekiel to prophesy to the dead bones and the dead bones jumped up and live again. You have to understand this morning as you're sitting in a prophetic church in a prophetic chair listening to a prophetic preacher that everything attached to your world has an ear. Your church has an ear. Are you blessing your church? Are you speaking curses in the public square? Your financial situation has an ear. Are you blessing it or are you speaking poverty to it? Because poverty has an ear. Sickness has an ear. What are you saying to it this morning? Your rough marriage has an ear. How are you talking to it? That pain in your body has an ear. It's listening. How are you speaking to it? Your broken past has an ear. Your present has an ear. But thank God your future has an ear. Everything everything connected to you has an ear. I dare you to tell somebody it's time to get mouthy. You ought to put your mouth on the right thing. You ought to start blessing your sickness. I am the healed of the Lord. You ought to bless your poverty. I am blessed and highly favored. Come on, somebody. You ought to bless your weakness. I am strong in the Lord. You ought to bless your depression. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You ought to bless that anxiety with a word. God has given me the spirit of peace that overcomes my mind and my heart and shall keep me established. Look at your neighbor say it's time to get mouthy. Oh, I see. Some of you can't say it, but you'll put your mouth on everybody else. You'll run your mouth about all the negative things in the world. You repeat Fox and CNN more than you repeat the Bible. But whose report will you believe? Whose decree will you believe? At LifeGate Church, we're going to believe the report of the Lord. Look at somebody. Tell a neighbor. It's time to get mouthy. It's time you ought to stop cursing your marriage. You ought to stop cursing your children. Well, they're just dumb like their mama. You, the devil is a liar. You ought to stop cursing your money. I'm always going to be broke. You ought to stop cursing your situation. It's always going to be like this. It has an ear. I double dog there is some of you in this room to take out your pocketbook and decree to it. This is the emptiest you're ever going to be. This is the brokest you're ever going to be. This is the less amount of money you're ever going to have. I speak to the ear of my money. I speak raises I didn't look for. I speak money I didn't look for. I speak deck to be canceled. Everything has an ear. Come on, if you're married, I dare you to look at your wife or your husband and say, hey, baby, this is the worst our marriage is ever going to be. We about to go on a honeymoon again. We about to fall in love again. We about to make love again. It's shifting. It's shifting. Let me come from some of you single folk. Uh-huh. And you ought to look around the room to find out who else is single. I dare you to prophesy to your future. 2023 is the last year I'll be single. I'll, I'm calling for... Because everything has an ear. What you say moves toward it. 
What you say hears it. Your sickness hears you. It ain't your sickness in the first place. My cancer, my tumors, my bunions, my knee. Come on, my fill in the blank. No, it's not yours. If you'd stop confessing that it's yours and start confessing, who's, devil, take your cancer back. Come on. Devil, take your blindness back. Devil, take your chaos back. Devil, take your loneliness. It don't belong to me. Why? Because I'm the healed of the Lord. I'm the blessed and highly favored. I am the head, not the tail. I am above. I am not beneath. I am in an elevated place, and everything has an ear. Jesus said, believe it. For you say it, believe it. He said, have faith in God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Come on, somebody. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. He is what? He is Alpha. He is Omega. Must believe that he is what? Healer of my body. Provider for my lack. Peace for my anxiety. Joy for my depression. You ain't saying nothing in here. Come on, Lance. Healing for my back. Freedom for my bondage. Freedom for my addiction that the devil tries to make me have. It ain't mine. He is. He is. Got to believe it. That's why I start. Have faith in the stock market. Have faith in my boss. My boss is my provider. Well, so be under your faith. Didn't get a Christmas bonus this year. Well, your boss ain't your Christmas bonus giver. We serve a different ecosystem. We're in a total different ecosystem. I remember, I remember back in the day, somebody told me, don't put no money, no stock market, that's foolish. Well, then a guy came on the scene by the name of Donald Trump. Poor guy he is. He's so poor. He can't afford the O or the R. He just po. And that stock market went crazy. I made so much money that year, I was shouting all the way at the bank. I said, sell it all. And I sold it all. That's because God's my provider. We put all this stock in stuff. When the word said, have faith in God. Have faith. Y'all just thought I supported Trump. That's not what I was saying. I'm not a politician. I'm a preacher. The president's not our answer or our savior. Jesus is. (laughs) Silly religious person. We forget who our savior is. During the elections, y'all get an infection. And you post like you're a demon, not a Christian. You know what I'm saying is true. People know us because of our love, not because of our political stance. I'm offended, probably. Okay, (laughs) believe it. Number two, decree it. He said you got to decree over your mountain. Decree over your job. Decree over your marriage. Decree over your money. Decree over your preacher. Decree over your church. Repeat it. Decree it. Repeat it. Decree it. Repeat it. Decree it. Rehearse it. Rehearse it. Decree it. Rehearse it. Decree it. All that takes work, preacher. You have a good job cursing it. Why is it easy to speak the curse and not easy to speak the blessing? Because there's a spiritual realm to it. It's easy to say, I'm always fat. I'm always fat and bald. Well, you could change that. Get your, you know, something. You know, go to the gym or something. It's easier to decree what's bad. It's harder to decree what you believe in faith and faith for. Come on, talk to me. I'm talking to me too. Right? He said, believe it, decree it. Then he said, then you'll see it. But you have to see it before you see it. Do you know that? Ben, you have to see it 
before you see it. How many of y'all like this new piano we got here? Isn't that nice? <laughs> ben saw it before he saw it. He said, ooh, pastor, if we had one of those da 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 does, boy, boy, that'd be nice. I said, if I get you a job, then. No, I'm kidding. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's how people be acting, though. When you tell them what you see in here, they'll be like, oh, really? 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 I can't believe he's believing God for that. Really? $200,000, really? A new building, really? Really? He's believing for windows. <laughs> he can't even fill the one he's got, really? <laughs> yeah, but I see it here before I see it here. I saw you before I saw you. 2008, during the Great Recession, we left a job and moved here with no money because we saw you. I saw you before I saw you, Bree. I saw you, I saw you before I saw you. Singing, Jericho walls are falling down. I saw you before I saw you. So if we're going to possess it, we have to see it before we see it. Huh? Come on, somebody. Stop seeing yourself single. I mean, you'd act different if you saw yourself that way. If you saw yourself married, you'd spend like you was married. You'd dress like you was married. My God. Somebody said, Pastor, I always attract these dogs. Well, stop dressing in a way that attracts them. And I'm going to look at Pastor Greg the whole time because I'm getting tomatoes thrown at me. You got to see it before you see it. Come on, church, say amen. amen. Now, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18, 21, 18, 21, that death and life are living in your mouth. A lot of this could be a lot further, but we keep getting hung up by our tongue. Oop, that hangs me up. I'm trapped now. I'm trapped, I'm trapped in this situation. It's because our mouth got us there. Me and my big mouth. Look at your neighbor and say, not him, me. Let's all say together, me and my big mouth. Okay, look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor. Stop having a big mouth. All problems could be avoided if it wasn't for this. I mean, you could just talk about Facebook and the pettiness on there for just a minute. People got big mouths and everybody's got an opinion about what they know nothing about. And do you think you're going to win a cultural war on Facebook? Like, really? Like, really? The only thing you're going to do is lose friends and lose influence. Preach the good news. The good news is news that is good. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor. Preach the good news, not the bad news. Look at someone behind you and say, neighbor. Preach the good news, not the bad news. Our mouth. We could have influenced a lot of people if it wasn't for me and my big mouth. I like big. The Bible said, mouths. And I cannot lie. Are you other brothers? Okay, let's preach. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you five decrees to say over your family this year. At the end of this service, you'll be able to download them on social media uh, or the website. You can make sure you can get those in your hands to put, like I've got mine on my phone already. It's an exclusive. I got the drop. You know, I got the drop before y'all did. So I got it on my phone and I can sit there and look at them every time the devil, I, nope, that's not what, that's not worth, nope, that's not the word, Lord. This is the word, Lord, for me and my family. Y'all ready? Number one, the very first decree is the season of emotional turmoil is over. I'm not, talking to, I'm not talking to anybody else in this room but myself. Look at your neighbor and say he's talking to himself. Just let him have his day. The season of emotional turmoil is over. 
because weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning time. And I came here to tell you this morning in 2023, we are in our morning time. Come on, it wasn't the first day Jesus got up. It wasn't the second day Jesus got up. But on the third day in the morning, they went to go to the tomb. But that tomb was empty. Why? Because he was in his getting up season. And I came to tell at least four people in this room this morning, we have stepped into our getting up season. And though we may have gone through hell in 21, we may have gone through hell in 22, I came to declare to you this morning that in 2023, our season of emotional turmoil is is over I have walked out of it I have evicted myself from it I'm not staying in it we are going up in Jesus and this church is going to elevate look at three people and tell them the season of emotional turmoil is over over David lost his child died and for days, he sat in the same stinky clothes. And he cried crocodile tears, begging God for it not to be true. And God shows up in his room. And the Bible said in Psalm, not in Psalm, but in 1 Samuel. You can help me out by throwing that up there if you would. Thank you so much. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, 20, the Bible said that David then arose from the earth. He got up. He elevated. Y'all see that? David got up from the earth and he stopped weeping. I came to tell LifeGate Church that the days of you needing Kleenexes in this season are over. We're going to get up from the earth. We're going to get up out of the earthly situation and we're going to look heavenwards and we're going to stop our crying. Come on, somebody. It sounds a little bit like Revelation where we need to stop our weeping. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah has already won the victory. David arose from the earth and stopped weeping. I came to decree to you, Jennifer, that your year of emotional turmoil is over. We silence it. We cancel it. We unlock it. It's, I dare you to slap your neighbor high five and say, neighbor, he's talking to you. Stop that weeping. Stop that crying. Look up into the heavens from where comes your help. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is is here baby joy is here somebody say yes come on if that bears witness with your spirit I dare you to throw up your hands and tell the Lord me too come on me too 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 mm, yeah my wife and I we we're mountain beach people. And, and I don't know why God put me in the middle where there's no mountains or beach. In the sweet by and by, I'm going to be, my mansion's about 10 feet up on a mountain by the Sea of Crystal so I can get the, both the best worlds. How, how do you know there'll be a mountain? Well, the mountain of the Lord's house he talks about mountains. Uh, there'll be a mountain there, I think, I hope. Jesus, please. <laughs> Just for me, not for anybody else. I'm sitting on the beach one day, Jeremy, and the Lord reminded me of this. And I generally tend my custom to take a book that's not real churchy, just to let my mind rest. And I like to sit on the beach under an umbrella with my toes in the water. And read that book. The tide comes in. It gets a little closer to my toes. And then pretty soon it's all splashing me as I'm sitting in the chair. So I have to pick up my chair. And I have to move back about five to ten feet. Because the tides start changing. And when I was praying over the 2023 year. Toward the end of the year. I heard this phrase ring out in my spirit to encourage you on this morning to tell you 
that our decree for 23 is number one, the season of emotional uh, toil is over, but number two, that the tides are beginning to change for this ministry. The winds are beginning to blow in a different direction. There's healing coming to manifest in our church for Isaiah 43 verse 19 is our verse for the year. For I am about to do something new, declares the Lord. Now it elevates us. It springs up. See, I have already begun it. I came to tell you as a congregation and a church this morning that the tides are getting ready to change. That's my decree. God is doing something right now brand new. It's not coming. It's not. You better move your chair if you don't want to get wet, baby, because the tides are beginning to change. The pain is about to be healing. The brokenness is about to be wholeness. Come on. We're about to stand up on our feet. Come on, preach up in here, Ezekiel. We're about to stand up on our feet, an exceedingly great army. Everything has an ear, and I speak to the hurt. I speak to the doubt. I speak to the pain and I'm talking to you today to tell you that it is the tides are beginning to change why because decree number three it's the dawning of a brand new era we are stepping into a new era we are stepping into a new season what held us won't what kept us back won't what bound us won't why because it's the dawning of a new era I dare you to cyber your neighbor high five and say oh yeah 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 for you for your family for your marriage, for your kids, for your money, for the generations to come. It's a dawning of a new era. We are stepping into revival. We are stepping into breakthrough. We are stepping into power. We are stepping I declare in this church every single chair filled twice. I declare in this church money come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I declare in this church we won't just have enough, Roberto. We're going to have more than enough. I declare every foul demon that doesn't want to get on board is exiting and every precious person called is entering. Why? It's the dawning of a new era. If you believe that in your spirit, stand up on your feet and give God praise. The musicians are coming. The volunteers are coming. The faithful volunteers are coming. Come on, somebody. New era. Oh, Jesus. Decree number four. I only got five. Decree number four. Here we go. Everything good attached to me is going to get up. I don't want everything getting up. There's things inside of me need to stay down. There's things inside of me that need to be buried. Come on, we've crucified the old man. He needs to stay that way. Everything good to me, attached to me, is about to get up and everything bad attached to me is about to lay down. How? Isaiah 43, 9, verse 9 says this, now it springs up. Everything that's good that is in my world right now is going to get gooder. Everything that's great is about to get greater. Everything that's blessed is about to be more blessed. Come on. And everything God doesn't want rising up in me is going to be buried low. Come on. The old me is going to be buried tomorrow. The old me is going to be buried today. The old me is going to continue to be buried. It's a dawning of a new day. It's a brand new season. And here we are. What needs to get up is going to get up. Faithfulness is going to get up. Excellence is going to get up. Supernatural miracles in this church is going to get up. Exorcism is going to get up. What needs to get up is going to get up. And what needs to get down is going to get down. Everything has an ear. Come on, stand to your feet with me. We got to say this together. Put that decree up there, Birdo. Come on, help me out. Uh, number, 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 number four. Number four, number four. Here we go. Let's all say it together. One, two, three, go. Say it one more time just to make the devil nervous for where we're going in 23. Come on. Everything good attached to me is about to get up. And everything bad attached to me is about to lay down. Sickness, lay down. Addiction, lay down. You lying spirit, lay down. Gossiping, lay down. Critical spirit, lay down. Rebellious spirit, lay down. Stubborn spirit, lay down. 
Victory, get up. Power. Deliverance. Order. Honor. Loyalty. Uh-huh. Are you ready for number five? All right, here's the fifth decree. 2023 is a year for me. Some say, well, I don't believe that. Well, then it's under your faith that's spoken, your decree. You decree into the fig tree, go ahead. You decree the mountain, go ahead. But for me, I'm decreeing, 2023 is a year for me. My money ain't going to act funny in 2023. I'm going to sleep good up in my own house, in my own bed. With no judgmental criticism in my ear when I lay down to go to bed. Tell me you don't deserve a house like this. I don't deserve no, I don't deserve the breath of my body. Y'all got quiet. 2023 is the year for me. It's the year for me. Down here, it's our time. Come on, Gen Xers. Up there, it's their time. But down here, it's our time, Goonies. Huh? 2023, I'm going to see more people deliver than I've ever seen in my life. 2023, I'm going to see more hearts mended than I've ever seen in my life. 2023, we'll see more teenagers get radically saved than we've ever seen in a history combined in this church. Y'all got quiet. I don't really care. 2023, we're going to see more adults get saved than we've ever seen combined in the history of this church. In 2023, we're not going to lack nothing. In 2023, we won't have a want, for the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 2023, my bank account's going to overflow. I reminded the Lord the other day, Lord, I gave a car away. I sold it. I'm expecting it in 2023. Why? Because it's a year for me. It's my year. It's my time. It's my hour from the Lord. I'm believing in 2023, the greatest messages I'll ever preach that you'll ever hear are going to come out of my mouth in 23 with signs, miracles, wonders, and deliverance following them. Your family members are going to get saved here. Come on, that wayward husband is going to get saved here. That bound up child of yours is going to get delivered here. 2023 is the year for me. I dare you to say it. Come on. I dare you to start prophesying to yourself. My best financial year. My best peace year. My best healing year. Come on, it belongs to me. Healing is the children's bread. Huh? It belongs to me. He is Jehovah Shalom, my peace. Peace belongs to me. He is Jehovah Nisi, my banner of victory. Victory belongs to me. He is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Healing belongs to me. 2023. What say you? You go into court, they'll accuse somebody. And they'll ask that person being accused, what say you to the jury? I said that all wrong. If somebody's on trial, the jury goes and gather their thoughts to find out if somebody's guilty or not. They come back and the judge says, have you reached your verdict? And the, they say yes. The judge says to the jury member, What say you? What say you? What if that jury member said like this? Uh, what say you? No, they have to say out of their mouth, guilty or not guilty. I dare you to say it out your mouth. This is my year. I, 
I dare you to say it out your mouth. I dare you, listen, I, some of you never say nothing in church. It's all right. I know you're quiet in personality, but you got to learn to speak to your mountain. You got to learn to speak to that fig tree. You got to learn to speak to that chaos of the enemy and release the blessing of the Lord. I dare three of you to get up on your feet that have been sitting down the entire time and say 2023 is my year. It's my year of breakthrough. It's my year of healing. It's my year of deliverance. Come on, talk to it. Talk to your future. It's my year of raises. It's my year that my stock is going to go through the roof. Come on. It's my year. It's my time for my God for a miracle right now, 2023. Come on, say it with me. Say this year, my year, the season of emotional turmoil is over. The tides are beginning to change. It's the dawning of a new era. Everything good is getting up. Everything bad is laying down. Because 2023 is a year for me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 2023 is a year for me. I dare you to pull out your bank account, your pocketbook, your checkbook and say, hey, money, 2023 is a year for me. Put your hand on your mind and say, mind, 2023 is a year for me. Point at Ben and say, musicians, multiply. Musicians, multiply. 2023 is the year for me. Now, I dare you to put some praise on it. I dare, I dare you. Praise him like you already got it. Praise him like you already got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout, it's mine. Shout, it's mine. Come on, shout, it's mine. It's mine, mine. It's mine. Anything the devil puts on you is not yours. Sickness, bondage, disease, anxiety. Well, my anxiety. Stop saying that. It's not yours. It's the devil's anxiety. And you're about to do something in the kingdom going to make him have a panic attack. What? When I wake up in the morning, my prayers, the devil puts alarms in hell and says, oh, he's awake. Where he's looking at his right hand demon saying, you better give me some Xanax. I'm being serious. That's what I pray over you. That you become armed and dangerous in the kingdom. That you become the Christian that the devil's telling everybody and warning them about. Stay away from that one. I told my wife, my little girl's our little arrow. She's about to make that devil mad. She's about to change a whole generation. She's about to bring an awakening word. She's about to bring deliverance. Why? Because she's open in her mouth. Yeah, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, yeah, yeah. Look at someone behind you and say, hey, neighbor, back, back there yonder. Yes. Just tell them yes. Uh -huh, yes to whatever God has for them. Yes to whatever God says. Yes to the blessing. Yes to the breakthrough. Well, I don't believe in all that prosperity. Well, then you can be poor if you want to, but around here, we're going to be a prosperous people. Money is coming from the north, the south, the east, and west. Some of y'all about to drive up on the, on the car lot in a brand new car. Some of you about to get keys to a brand new house. You ain't saying nothing. Some of you about to get a brand new wardrobe. Some of you about to get a brand new job. Some of your businesses are going to quadruple this year. Why? Because 20 2023 is a year for me. Somebody say yes. Everything has an ear. Everything. Everything has an ear. No, it don't. Let somebody come up to you and tell you you're dumb. And see how you respond once you hear it. Their spouse better not be there. That's what I'm saying. Because my wife will cut you. She's from Chicago. She'll take off them hoops, take off her chunklas, and she'll come for you, okay? Uh -huh. Everything has an ear. That's why, that's why the Bible said be slow to speak. It wasn't talking in speed. It was talking don't do it. And quick to listen. Be 
be slow to speak it, quick to listen. We've all gotten in trouble speaking too fast. You know what the Lord told me? When you get angry, shut your mouth. That's a whole sermon. When you're angry, that's not the time to say nothing. It's time to shut up and lay before the Lord. In your anger, don't sin. How do we sin when we're angry? We open up our mouth. Because Shonda's here. I think I saw her. She's back there. She's one of our kids from our youth ministry. I was a youth pastor way back in the there. 20 years ago. Her dad, Elder Charles Williams, he's a professional musician and a pastor at Eagles Nest Worship Center. And whenever Pastor Charles would go, "Uh uh-huh, that means he wanted to say something. It was going to hurt. He was just waiting for the right moment to let you know you're out of order. But he wouldn't say nothing for a while. He'd just go, "Uh uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He'd get the "Mm mm-hmm, and he'd look over his glasses at you. You you knew you was in trouble because you said too much. And he used to tell me, he'd say, Pastor, some things just don't need to be said. Boy, I've heard that so many times when I've wanted to because your decree will make a difference. What you say will make a difference. I, as a pastor, have to be careful what I say. I have to be careful what I decree because it will make a difference, either good or bad. I want to be classy. I want to be a leader you want to follow. So I have to be careful what I say. Well, what do you want to say? I don't need to say it. I want to say what's right and pleasing to the Lord. Even when it hurts, because sometimes it hurts. Come on, amen. But it's from here through the spirit of God. What I decree is going into an ear that goes down into a spirit to either bring growth or to hurt. And at our church, we want to bring growth to you. We want to see you elevated and mature in Jesus. Be a spiritual Christian, not a carnal Christian. And I think collectively we're doing that together. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I believe today's message was tailor-made just for you. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button and become a subscriber to this YouTube channel. And then also, I want to personally thank all of you that week after week, you partner with us and you sow into the ministry of LifeGate Church. If you haven't done that yet, there's a great opportunity for you to do that right now. Just click that button on the screen and become a partner today. It will be a blessing to us and I know it will be to you as well. Until next time, we'll see you then.